Channels has been the only program in the South Coast to develop, nurture, and produce outstanding journalists. This program provides avenues for students to find themselves, their voice, and their purpose. Patricia taught me and all of her students to believe. Thank you all for being here. Uh, former students, current students, faculty, staff, administrators, alumni. Uh, we're gathered here today because, it sounds like a wedding, right? We're gathered here today. <laughs> uh, a long time in the making. Um, we have a program here, the Channels uh, and Journalism program. Um, they've been in operation since 1957 at Santa Barbara City College. And um, they've not just been a program at Santa Barbara City College, they've been the program. Uh, if you, when you walk into our, our newsroom, our new newsroom today, you're gonna see uh, various plaques and awards all over the wall. Uh, this program continues year in and year out to be recognized as one of the premier news media outlets in the state of California for community colleges and they do it year after year after year. Um, since its inception in 1957, the SBCC journalism program has worked to develop a pipeline of journalists to enhance the regional media landscape. This student media outlet has also had a history of encouraging women and diverse students to take on leadership positions. In a time when almost anyone has a platform and a keyboard at their fingertips to push information out to the masses, the profession and the art form of journalism is more important now than ever. This program provides students with the tools and the skills they need to responsibly investigate, write, and produce quality news coverage. SBCC feels strongly that this program also provides avenues for students to find themselves, their voice, and their purpose. This new space that you're all about to see exemplifies SBCC's, SBCC's commitment to supporting and valuing students' freedom of press expression, recognizing journalism's critical role in democracy and social justice, and operating with transparency. Uh, I also want to uh, recognize that uh, what you're going to see is, uh, again, a permanent place. I wish we had the before pictures. Now that I think <laughs> about it, I'm like, so, so this used to be uh, a, C a computer network engineering classroom. It had a bunch of towers and wires and computers everywhere. And, um, and, and what it is now is just, it, it's amazing to see what it has become. Uh, the, we were operating out of a portable building for many years, and so uh, to have a space that, it, that we can call home, that our journalism uh, students feel uh, proud about, um, is great. And, and the two people that um, are mainly responsible for how it looks and how it feels, we have our, I want to recognize our department chair, the journalism department, um, and also uh, advisor, advisor to the channels, uh, Darlene uh, Principe, and our, yeah, and our journalism lab teaching assistant, John Rose. John, where are you? So uh, this project, we started having conversations a few years ago, and, and also want to point out uh, Dean Price. I know it's, uh, Dean Price and uh, Vice President uh, Carola Smith. Um, I was lucky enough that uh, they were supportive of this project. They handed me the baton. And then we began having meetings together. And um, if you remember those early meetings, I can remember Jar uh, Darlene and John saying, well, what's the parameters? What's, what do we have here? What's the budget? And uh, I said, you know, I just want to be able to walk in there and say, now this is a newsroom. Uh, and I want our students to walk in there with a sense of pride and say, wow, I want to be a part of this program. And uh, these two went to work, and, and they, they had countless meetings with designers and um, put together their concept of how they wanted work to function in this area, how they believe students would work together. And, and they just did an excellent job with the design. I think you'll all agree when you see this. So 
um, thank you for, for your vision and your design and, and what you guys put together. And with that, I would like to uh, now welcome and introduce our Vice President of Instruction, uh, Maria Via Gomez, to say a few words. Thank you for thinking of the stool, by the way. All of a sudden, Michael looked taller from where I was sitting. Thank you so much for being so thoughtful. Thanks to everyone who made this project and the event possible. Everyone who had the vision and from the logistical side, the visionary side, the budgetary aspect, the designing, and the impact that this would have um, for our students and our college. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I wasn't here when that initiated, but I'm here to see it blossom and, and, and can't wait to witness everything that will come out of this new space. Thank you to the channels for the tradition of advancing the student voice and producing hard work journalists for our region. My name is Maria Villa Gomez, and I'm the Assistant Superintendent, Vice President of Academic Affairs. And today I'm sitting in for Dr. Erica Andrajanas, its Superintendent President, who wishes she could be here today, and she's here in spirit. It was mentioned in the press release, but I must say it again. The channels has been the only program in the South Coast to develop, nurture, and produce outstanding journalists. Since 1957, the Channels has also had a strong history of encouraging and advancing women and diverse students into leadership positions. We are grateful to have them in this new space to further inspire and advance their mission. This is an investment in our students who are ascertaining the truth through this work and building a stronger local media landscape. We look forward to our students' continued work on producing unbiased, strong articles that share their voice. Thank you and congratulations, and may the mighty force of journalism always be with you. Thanks so much. A foundation was already laid before us um, that has contributed to allowing us to be in the position that we're in. Uh, and I want to honor that and recognize that. And to do that, I'm going to call up uh, journalism faculty member Joshua Molina. It's such a pleasure to be here today. And Patricia Stark, if I don't look at you while I'm talking, it's because I'm going to lose it if I do make eye contact with you. So um, it's nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing personal. Um, I'm going to talk about Patricia Stark. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you two stories about Patricia Stark. She is the most influential teacher that I've ever had. And honestly, she is responsible for my growth and my success, but not just me, countless, of, countless students over the years. And I keep in touch with them they always say how profoundly Patricia impacted their lives, not only in journalism, but in so many ways as they matured into adults. Before I get into, into uh, my two stories, I just want to say one thing about me. I was an 18-year-old in J101, and I, I walked into Patricia's class, and Patricia was the first teacher I ever had who had high standards for me. Uh, she dared to bring out the best in me. And so here was this white woman from Louisiana <laughs> and this Mexican-American kid walking into her class. And she was the first one who ever said, you have potential and you can do better. And she was the first teacher I ever had who did not coddle me. And 
it was profound. Uh, it was such a profound impact. Her teaching, her wisdom uplifted me. Um, sometimes, right? She made me cry um, <laughs> with, with uh, how she taught. Uh, but it, that's important because she was willing to risk not being liked for the sake of educating me. And that's such an important skill of a teacher. I've been teaching for 14 years. I love being liked by my students, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's so much fun. But sometimes you cannot be liked in the moment. They will respect you later down the road. And Patricia risked all of that because she saw something in me. And that was a difficult place for both of us. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but Patricia and I did a lot of this in the channel's lab. And I remember every second of it. <laughs> um, but the key was, she always told me the truth. Sometimes it was in the harshest terms, but she did it because she believed in my potential. She allowed me to see myself. She allowed me to see the potential that I had as a person and when you're 18 you're figuring things out patricia was teaching life lessons that i live with today and i'll forever be grateful for you giving that time and that care to me um, i'm going to tell two quick stories about patricia that i think are going to illustrate the kind of advisor that she was journalism when done correctly is often a lonely place Okay. It means having the courage to challenge people, systems, companies, governments in the face of pushback. It means finding comfort somehow when you feel alone so that you can have power to stand up to those who criticize you, who yell at you, who tell you how to do your job. When I was a student here in 1995-ish, I don't remember the exact year, uh, the head of the SBCC campus security, the security chief, was arrested for D a DUI, okay? Drunken driving. Now, fourth one. Fourth one, okay, right. <laughs> this, this source, was a, a supporter of the channels, was, was somebody who believed in the mission of the channels. To report and write the story would undoubtedly upset this man and the higher ups at the college. Patricia, of course, received preemptive letters, pushback on whether it was news to write the story. And I know Every young journalist in here has already heard that. People who know nothing about journalism saying, is that really news? And, and we have to stand up to that, right? And Patricia, in her role as the advisor, it's not her job to write stories. It's not her job to tell people how to write the story. It's her job to advise students. She explained the role of the press the nuance, the finesse needed, the type of questions to ask, and the overall pros and cons of pursuing that story. And she let her students decide whether to write a story. And of course, anyone knows about me, knows, I wanted to write that story, and I wanted to write it immediately, get it posted as soon as possible, get it published. But the role of the channels is a really difficult one because you're not a professional journalist out in the real world. You're in academia, okay? I had the pleasure of serving as interim acting advisor for three years when Patricia was on the Academic Senate. And I got a taste of what that is like when you're balancing the needs of your students and the higher ups. As advisor, Patricia's mission was to teach her stu students reporting and writing skills but that was just the beginning. It was also her job to teach the importance of journalistic integrity, ethics, the roles and responsibilities of the free press. She also taught her students how to balance that power with empathy, kindness, and understanding. And to do all of that, 
in an academic environment is nothing short of God's work. <laughs> when the DUI story was spreading around campus, Patricia navigated the academic pushback from, the peer, from her peers, bosses, professional colleagues, while simultaneously allowing student reporters and student editors to do the work that she taught us to do. We published that story. We published the story of the head of campus security getting a DUI. And of course, that subject was not happy. People at the college were not happy. But the story was accurate. It was truthful and necessary to report. No one felt good after that story was published. And that's kind of the big thing about journalism is that a lot of people think we're out there to get everyone. Like a lot of times what we write, we feel bad. We don't want to have to write these stories, but we do because it's the right journalism call. And that's what Patricia teaches her students. She teaches us how to be strong in the face of opposition. She teaches us how to be strong in the face of anger from sources. And she teaches us how to be courageous in the face of opposition, disappointment, and isolation. Because let's face it, we all love journalism when it's practice in a faraway land. We all admire it. We all think, wow, what tremendous journalism. But the second student journalists, the second journalists start to report heavily and harshly on the things going on in your community or your campus, those same people who praise journalism out there all of a sudden start to say, really, it's not really a story here, is it, right? They start to rationalize why it's not a story. But to report what is right, even if it upsets powerful people, it's not only a privilege and an obligation, it is a responsibility for us to do that, okay? And Patricia, always drove that home. Patricia was the strongest hard news reporter that you can imagine, because she knew the power of watchdog journalism. Second quick story that shows another side of Patricia. A reporter covering an associated student government meeting overheard another student make an inappropriate comment, a racist remark prior to the official beginning of the meeting. So there's talking on the side, the reporter hears this, wants to write a story. I was not the reporter, I was an editor at this time. The reporter wrote the story. You could imagine the preemptive pushback from that student, from the other members of the student government, and also the advisors of student government. Why would you wanna write a story that embarrasses a person who is volunteering in a club. Why would you want to do that? The reporter wrote the story and I was an editor and we used like Cork Express and PageMaker back then. We were laying out the paper on the computer, me and another hotshot editor. And we were, we were so excited about this story. We're gonna get this student in trouble. We're gonna hold this student accountable for this terrible thing that they did. And Patricia walked by, right? She, I remember this clearly. Her office was right behind the lab. We're huddled around the computer laughing. And we had the story top of the page, above the fold, at the very top. And we had a very strongly worded headline to the effect of, student hurls racial slur at ASG meeting. <laughs> this is like 1996, okay? Patricia walked through the lab, saw the headline, and anyone who knows Patricia Stark, she just has to look at you, right? <laughs> you know you've done wrong when she gives you that look, arms crossed. So she sees the headline, the placement of the story, and she says, 
this is an important story to report, but do you want to publicly embarrass and shame the student by placing that story at the top of the page with that headline? Have you thought about the impact of that placement? Instantly, reality sunk in. Of course we want to get this person in trouble. Of course we want to hold them accountable. Of course. But it's a 17-year-old student on a college campus. And reality sunk in that Patricia also teaches us empathy. She teaches us ethics. Even though we have a power to do something, it isn't always the best to exercise that power. And if you exercise that power, how do you do it in a way that provides accountability without public shame? Me and the other editor were so caught up in our watchdog role that we forgot the purpose of the story in the first place. The purpose was to report the news not sensationalize the news. And Patricia told us all that just by giving us that look and we were reminded, we were reminded of all that she had told us before. So we moved the story to the bottom of the page and we changed the headline. The story needed to run, but we also had to show some grace and empathy for the fact that these are students on a college campus and there's a difference between a student and when somebody says something in a place of power and authority. And we still held that student accountable. With the campus security chief getting the DUI, Patricia knew how to empower us and amp us up to provide the courage to do that story. And in this story, she knew how to tamp us down so that we could write that story with the right tone. And Patricia taught all of her students these skills all the time, every day in her lab. I stayed for three and a half years on the channels. <laughs> I have never had a better teacher ever than Patricia Stark. I'm the first person to go to college in my family, the first person to graduate from college in my family. It took me a long time to graduate. And it's all because Patricia did not see me as just another student in her class for her to teach to get a paycheck she said i think i can help this student and she did profoundly because i'm still talking about her today to anyone <laughs> who will listen in wrapping up patricia taught us that journalism is about being brave it's about being strong it's about showing empathy it's about trusting in yourself and your work, even when you feel all alone, when you feel shunned, and when you feel people are telling you that you're doing something wrong. Patricia taught all of her students to remain courageous, no matter the pushback, the setback, or the opposition. Most importantly, above all else, Patricia taught me and all of her students to believe in ourselves and that's the greatest gift and that's bigger than journalism itself that a teacher can give a student because that's a gift that at 50 years old still trying to climb a mountain every day hearing you tell me that i am somebody and that i have potential and that i can do anything i want you're the only teacher who's ever told me that. And that's greater than any lead I can write because that's a gift that lives with me forever. So I just wanted to share that and thank you, Patricia. Um, thank you, that was just lovely. Where's Josh? <laughs> um, so I used to describe, I think you can tell from what Josh just said, the nature of the job. And I used to tell people who asked me what I did that I would take a large group of um, untrained, unpaid volunteers and put them to work on a project that would involve lots of controversy and sensitivity 
and then put it before a large audience and do all of this on deadline almost every day. Um, so it was a job that was equally um, exhausting <laughs> and exhilarating. And, um, and I just, I really did love it. I was here for 30 years. But I want to say one thing and then I'll sit down because it's chilly and we've been sitting a long time. Josh talked a lot about journalism. But when I think back on my 30 years here, what really, what really resonates, what's really profound is that every, pretty much every two years, we would have this complete turnover of the channel staff, sometimes every year. And so everything that the senior students, even those three, especially those who were here three and a half years, everything they had learned, they would go on to transfer, and that's as it should be, and we would have to start from scratch. And so at the beginning, I and John Rose and other lab teaching assistants over the years, we go, oh my gosh, we have to start over again, <laughs> getting to know these people, starting to create a team, honestly creating a family, because the students were always in the newsroom. This wasn't just a normal class. And then at the end of the year, of the two years, we had to tell them goodbye. And so what resonates for me, and I'm gonna try not to tear up, is how much we really were a family and how much every couple of years we would start over, make this new family, and then we would send them off in the world. And it was very meaningful to me. I remember it with great fondness. I, I remember, I see some of you here, some old, old friends of, along with the new faces. And journalism was important, but journalism really just was um, sort of this foundation for some things that I think were even more important. Um, I loved Santa Barbara City College, very grateful to be here, and today was lovely. I didn't know this was going to happen. If I had, I would have um, put on something warmer and um, <laughs> maybe dried my hair before I left the house. So thank you, Josh. Thank you, everyone. So we actually have an award for you. So we had a plaque made up. It says, with our deepest appreciation, we hereby honor Patricia Stark, journalism professor, with this award in recognition of the 31 years of visionary guidance, exceptional leadership, and unconditional commitment and dedication to our students, Santa Barbara City College, and the channels, thank you. Thank you. All right, before I release you to the hors d'oeuvres and, and the opportunity to walk in and see this new channels newsroom, I also want to thank um, uh, Everything you see here, the food, the, the chairs, the, the microphones, the every, Grace Tweet is responsible for that. Grace is the one that took this uh, leadership role and put all of this together and, and kept us on track and uh, did a wonderful job. Grace, thank you so much. I know you had the help of Holly and Christina also. Thank you for helping out. And then also, lastly, facilities. Faci we have the best facility staff around. They were working all through the weekend with the rains, cleaning campus. Uh, last night, it was raining again. Uh, we were very worried. They said, don't worry. We will be in that courtyard at 6 a.m. tomorrow, and we will have it ready to go for you. Facilities cannot thank you enough. You are amazing. And with that, you're welcome to join us for hors d'oeuvres and a walk through our new channels newsroom. Thank you. Hey,